Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And I received some feedback on my previous top 10 arena compositions that I needed to upgrade from MS Paint, which a lot of other prestigious content creators use, to something a little bit more elaborate, which I have today. Hopefully everything goes according to plan, but also uh, upon seeing some uh, additional feedback is that a lot of specializations were left out on that top 10 list. So I've decided to create a series of videos going over the top 10 arena comps for every specialization in Shadowlands, covering some of the covenant ideas and strategies that could go with these specific pairings so that we can all plan ahead and maybe see what's piquing our interest for Shadowlands. I mean, it's less than a month and a half away at the time of this video so it would be a good idea to start making those plans and in today's top 10 we're going to be going over the affliction warlock what are they going to be the 10 most competitive fun and awesome arena compositions to go after those prestigious gladiator titles and pretty baller looking gladiator drakes on top of the elite transmogs uh, on your journey with your team so today we're going to be going into the top 10 and number 10 it's all going according to plan. Everything's working out so far. We've got Affliction Warlock, Marksmanship Hunter, and Healer. Now, the reason that this is number 10 and not higher, I mean, Affliction Warlock and Marksmanship Hunter are pretty strong on the beta at the moment, is because these are specializations that are notorious for being nerfed into the ground. Hopefully... Uh, Blizzard is is a little bit nice, you know. He's not like he's not. They're not like a Negan or something because uh, I, it would be nice to see these specializations around. You know, Battle for Azeroth, we missed them, uh, but at the moment they are looking to be like a deadly duo. Um, with Affliction having a ton of baseline curses returned to it and extra mobility to be able to get around the map. Some of the things that were hampering it where it would just be stuck in one spot and it would need a lot of assistance are now not really longer a problem. Uh, marksmanship Hunters are dishing out tons of damage and they bring out instant crowd control. Uh, I was thinking about interesting pairings in terms of covenants if this was something you were looking to plan out with your team. So in this specific situation, I would strongly consider a Night Fae Hunter. Uh, as it stands right now, Necrolord is kind of the safe go-to pick with Venthyr being, a, I think, a solid second in PvP. Uh, but this is one where the Night Fae one could be worth experimenting as it's basically a super-powered volley that you put on the ground. Uh, and if you've got an Affliction Warlock who's likely to be the target, you have the Affliction Warlock stand still. You drop this super-powered volley on them and you just start teeing off more arrows than Legolas. I would recommend pairing this with a Restoration Druid, firstly, because of Ursul's Vortex, to hold targets out in the open for the Affliction Warlock and the Marksmanship Hunter to kind of free freely rain terror down. Now, these are both specializations that do struggle when they're attacked, but because they're both high-priority targets to attack, only one of them is going to be shut down, and while the other one is left free, they are going to be wreaking havoc, which is why it made it onto the top 10 list here. Currently, Disciplined Priest is a very powerful healer, and you could likely pair it with almost any composition. However, I have, I have a feeling with the way tuning is going that it's probably going to fall off. So I've listed Disciplined Priest as an option, but not one of the best. Historically, these this is a composition that worked really well with a Restoration Shaman, which it still can. Uh, I recommend running a, a Venthyr Restoration Shaman for the Chain Harvest. You can allocate that to do damage. It's like a super-powered Chain Lightning. Allocate it to do damage or to do healing. Uh, and again, because the Hunter and the Warlock are high priorities, you're not going to need to worry about being attacked too much as a healer on this composition or a Holy Paladin for things like Hammer of Justice or Ashen Hollow from the Venthyr uh, to drop a giant consecration on the ground and you can just start throwing hammers in aggressively and also scare targets away from that area so that your warlock and hunter can have more free reign so this composition is looking like it could be pretty strong and a lot of fun now moving into the number nine we've got warlock retribution paladin healer now it's still ranked down here on the bottom of the list out of the 10 because retribution paladin at the moment contributes a lot of strong extra utility to the warlock and to the healer providing things like blessing of protection blessing of freedom uh, to move around the map as well as concentration aura which uh, we consider for the holy paladin a lot but not so much for the retribution paladin so having the concentration aura for your warlock to be able to soak interrupts a little bit more easily is going to be a great benefit uh, as a spellcaster which is why i wanted to take this into consideration 
Also, probably recommending a Venthyr Retribution Paladin, again, for the Ashen Hollow, to have that giant consecration on the ground to get good zone control, and again, pairing it with a Restoration Druid to hold targets out in the open. At the moment, I, where I see this composition struggling would be as if Retribution, again, gets hit with a really heavy nerf bat, um, because its execution sentence is insane. It was slightly... It's, I don't know if it's been slightly redesigned or massively buffed, to be honest, but you can basically add in a ton of damage to Execution Sentence, and as soon as it connects, it explodes. Things absolutely explode. So while the other team is chasing your Affliction Warlock around because they're a juicy target to go after, you as the Retribution Paladin in this team are going to just be laying waste, providing a ton of utility, and assisting the Warlock in ways that other specializations really can't. I think that this is a composition that could work with Restoration Shaman, Mistweaver Monk, or possibly a Discipline Priest, although I'm putting it towards the bottom because this is not a composition that I would necessarily recommend with it, but it could be interesting to try and pair in for extra damage. I think you run the line of being a little bit too fragile with a Priest, a Ret, and an Affliction Warlock all on the same team when we get closer to the release, but still a strong number nine composition, one that I'm definitely looking to check out. And number eight... We've got the Warlock Mage Healer. Well, in Battle for Azeroth, this, this comp was a number one for probably a year and a half. How on earth is it a number eight on this list for Shadowlands? Well, that's because a lot of other specializations are looking really nutty. Now, of course, this is still at its core a strong fundamental composition in 3v3 Arena because you bring multiple diminishing returns of crowd control with fear and polymorph. And that's going to always be a staple of the composition to zone control uh, and to spam out crowd control. So no matter what, I've currently listed it as best with an arcane mage. Uh, this is because Affliction Warlocks currently have a legendary that causes their corruption to be a very powerful slow. This is a legendary that in PvP I feel like is going to be pretty much mandatory for you if you're interested in playing Affliction Warlock. And Frost Mage and that slow don't really benefit each other a lot. Now, you could make it work, obviously, with Frost Mage. I'm not saying that you couldn't. But I think bringing in Arcane Mage with how much damage they're able to pump out right now consistently with single target... Uh, it's going to be a better performer. Now, things like the Fire Mage, I would slot in at the number one if it received a little bit of tuning because Fire Mage has been redesigned as a damage over time specialization of Mage where it just melts people with Ignite. Uh, but at the moment, it just seems like it's not doing the melting part of the fantasy uh, it's kind of just like a slow burn, like you lit a match. It's not really that spooky. If it does get beefed up a bit, I see it being able to be a number one slot, a Fire Mage, an Affliction Warlock. And this is a composition that can pretty much work with any healer. I mean, I've listed all of them. I recommend a Druid again for Ursula's Vortex to hold targets out in the open and to assist with the Mage and the Warlock avoiding uh, melee attackers or a Restoration Shaman to safely heal from the back line and benefit from their mastery. When they heal a target that's low health, you, they heal it for even more. Or if you want to get aggressive, you could bring in a Holy Paladin a dis for stun locks and a little bit of damage. Discipline Priest for a lot of damage but no stun lock. And even a Holy Priest um, for additional stun lock and some consistent healing. And I listed Mistweaver at the bottom because it will bring strong, consistent healing and be a, be an okay option, but it's got no offense, basically. It has no offense uh, comparatively to the other healer options, which is why it's, I would, in this composition, put it below uh, even a Holy Priest, although I'm still on the fence as to whether or not Holy Priest is going to be super competitive. Uh, but this is another one that's going to benefit the mages being Venthyr as their, I think it's Mirrors of Torment, which is basically they apply to the target. It's dispellable. And then when the target casts spells, they take damage and eventually silence themselves. But if you play with an Affliction Warlock, a spell that we've probably all forgotten because Affliction Warlock has been lost uh, for most of basically the entirety of Battle for Azeroth, uh, is Unstable Affliction, which when removed, silences the Dispeller and currently does a hefty amount of damage, which I'd really like to see stay that way because Dispelling that Unstable Affliction has always been a staple of the Warlock. They're the dot class that protects other dots, so they're going to synergize well with a Venthyr Mage on those Mirrors of Torment. You could switch to a healer, get the Mirrors of Torment, up with an unstable affliction what are they gonna do cast a spell and silence themselves and hit them really hit themselves really hard or dispel themselves and hit themselves really hard so i think that it really enables a venthyr mage uh, in pvp and venthyr is just strong in general for casters because it's going to reduce your interrupt duration by 25 percent 
This is a number eight comp at the moment, just because all the specializations I think are doing such a higher raw amount of output, but it could easily be a rank one comp. It could easily be slotted into a, a tier one, but it's currently number eight on my own personal list here. And then as we move forward, Ooh, we got number seven and look who it is. It's the Havoc Demon Hunter. It's a buddy that we haven't seen on a lot of, on a lot of lists right now. And I saw you in the comments wondering, no Demon Hunter? Uh, this again is gonna be good synergies now with the Affliction Warlock because Demon Hunters in PVP wanna go for the Sinful Brand, the Venthyr Demon Hunters and apply Sinful Brand, which is unfortunately dispellable. But if you play with an Affliction Warlock with Unstable Affliction, they got your back. They're going to be covering your back and making sure that sinful brand ain't going nowhere. Another thing to take into account for Demon Hunter that kind of limited its synergy with spellcasters was the lack of a mortal wounds effect. Demon Hunters now have that through an honor talent. When they fell rush, they will apply mortal wounds. So if there's a, the major downside that's common in the past would have been two melee classes attacking the Warlock, a Death Knight, a Warrior, a Windwalker, and the Demon Hunter not providing any sort of mortal wounds effect to reduce healing and prevent them from chasing the Warlock, any additional crowd control. Uh, with only Imprison, it was pretty limited. But now I see this being a competitive option as a composition and one that I am very curious to try out um, this is one again i would recommend with the resto druid or restoration shaman probably should have put them about the same uh with this one it's just i'm really overvaluing i'm not really overvaluing it's definitely high value on ursul's vortex um, because with demonic circle baseline on the warlock the warlock can teleport from the middle of the map behind a pillar and you can put a vortex in the middle so when the melee attacker tries to get back to the warlock they get pulled back in the open the warlock's really happy uh, so i think there's going to be some very good synergies with that and while the warlock is avoiding damage your heal over time effects are healing them whereas things like the restoration shaman a lot of their cooldowns are kind of static stuck on the ground so the warlock wants to move but needs to stand still with the cooldown so there's kind of a, a negative effect there now you could bring in a paladin for a really big amount of burst damage uh, with this setup but i think it would be the most uh, risky healer uh, of them all currently now when we move into number seven or number six, sorry. We got the Death Knights. The Death Knights are coming here. And I've listed both Unholy and Frost. They both have their pros and cons, but I think that they're both good and they're both equally number six. So Unholy Death Knight's gonna provide you a lot of consistent sustain dot-based damage, which has always synergized well with the Affliction Warlock in the past. When you think of this composition, it was called Shadow Cleave and Cataclysm. And this, this has historically fit a really strong fantasy role. Assuming that dot damage for Affliction Warlocks ends up being in a reasonable position. Unholy Death Knights aren't gutted again by the, the nerf bat. Um, this is one that I still think will work really well. I would recommend a Necro Lord Death Knight, regardless of their Frost or Unholy. And this is very similar to the Ursul's Vortex, where you start, you spawn an, spawn an Abomination Limb, which spins around the Death Knight and pulls targets. Now, this can be used two ways, right? You could use this to pull attackers off of the Warlock, and the Warlocks can be really happy. They can cast spells and do things. Um, or you can pull targets out into the open, or both at the same time if you're really ungodly. So this could be a lot of fun as a Death Knight, and I think very strong as well, because the damage output of Death Knights and Warlocks is at a high point uh, currently. I think you could play this with any healer. Holy Paladin, again, would be more aggressive pick. Uh, Shaman might be a little bit more consistent and also brings Purge, uh, which you don't really have uh, in this composition, which might be nice against Paladin specifically. Uh, and then Restoration Druid is, I think, one that you can't really go wrong with in this particular setup. Um, but Frost Death Knight is going to bring heavy burst damage. If you're going to play with a Frost Death Knight, probably don't want the Holy Paladin. I would recommend running with the Syndragosa Stun Legendary. So when you summon in the, the Frost Worm, which is baseline now, it will also AoE stun targets. So that's going to set you up really good with Abomination Limb, holding targets out in the open, unleash the dragon, stun everything, bounce the chill streak, the Warlock's going ham in the back line. This is going to be a really fun and awesome composition, but it's coming in at number six, which means things really only get even more awesome from here. We've got number five, a staple, a classic in arena, the Warlock Elemental Shaman Healer. Now, Elemental Shaman right now is one-shotting people with the Necrolord Covenants. I feel like it's not intended, and it's probably going to be nerfed, but it still doesn't matter. 
because even if that covenant wasn't providing them a ridiculous amount of burst damage this is a composition that if affliction warlocks are sturdy enough to not fall over immediately uh, and with that new legendary that applies slows on corruption more importantly with this is because it kind of lacked the ability to slow targets uh, and move around while they were slowed now that that's been alleviated by a legendary it's really going to be enabled you've got two high priority spell casters so if a team goes up to the elemental shaman the affliction warlock is raining down freely if teams go up to the affliction warlock the elemental shaman is raining down freely so you've got that kind of benefit going on uh, by bringing two spell casters one of the major downsides of the elemental shaman is that flame shock has a cooldown so it can be difficult to have it on multiple targets to grant yourself a ton of lava bursts once again our good pal unstable affliction is going to make it so the elemental shaman is a happy shaman uh, and those flame shocks aren't going to be dispelled nearly as frequently uh, as to whether or not what covenant the elemental shaman is going to want to look towards, I'm still leaning on the side of either Necrolords or Venthyr for PvP purposes. Again, for Venthyr, uh, you may want to opt out of the 25% interrupt reduction because elemental shaman has so many spell schools anyway. But you can go into the Soulbind Conduits down to Draven, pick the Draven talent tree, and when you're below 40% health, you take 10% less damage. So one of the downsides of this composition could be fragility, uh, being too squishy. So if you went after Venthyr and Draven, you would have 10% damage reduction. And for Elemental Shaman, their conduits are a little bit lackluster from the Elemental side of it in PvP. But I have seen Restoration Conduits, such as the Earthshield one, and maybe even with an Earthshield Legendary, uh, doing a lot of extra healing. On the elemental shaman so you may be able to play this almost as like the hybrid double healer dot rot comp uh that it was notorious for being uh on the ladder at the moment it's one that's standing out on the beta the staple healer for this has always been the restoration druid probably should have taken the restoration shaman off i would not uh, recommend it with the restoration shaman uh, or the holy paladin to get more aggressive this is one where holy priest could work so imagine the restoration shaman is not there and it's the holy priest holy priest is probably going to fit in the category of compositions with double spellcaster if it has a place at all uh, in shadowlands and again it brings the stun and because affliction and element are high priority targets the holy priest is happy he pressing flash shield and, and being able to press their buttons without being stunned and interrupted the whole time you know so just ignore the restoration shaman here put a holy priest there instead druid for defense Offense, priest paladin for offense solid looking composition here moving into shadowlands now number four we've got another classic we've got the affliction warlock arms warrior healer now the arms warrior can have a lot of choice here uh, and when it comes to covenants if you're interested in playing with an affliction warlock i feel like you could run a kyrian and get the spear of bastion which functions like an Ursus Vortex. So if you're going to do that, you may want to play with a Shaman or a Paladin over a Druid, as it might be a bit overkill with Ursus Vortex, although I feel like cooldowns that hold players out in one place, you can never really have enough of, so still could be playing it with a Druid. But the Spear Bastion is going to be really useful because one of the problems you could have is where the Warlock is just tunneled down and not able to do anything. But with the Spear of Bastion down, they're gonna you're gonna hold melee attackers in place while the warlock uses portal and then just goes crazy with dots um, this is a composition that also enables the warlock because sweeping strikes allows the warrior to attack two targets so again if the windwalker and death knight are chasing the warlock they got sweeping strikes rolling they're having fun hitting two targets the whole time generating a ton of rage they can sit in battle stance because the warlock is going to be the top priority target for this uh, it's a really fun composition in my mind for the warrior the warlock and the healer um, because it's one where teams are heavily punished for just training down one target it's got a lot of pressure it has the mortal wounds effect it's a really well built composition why it's which is why it's currently uh at my number four on the list and if you're going to run spear bastion again play shaman healer rather than a druid but you could still play druid if you wanted to also curious enough i've been trying to think about covenants that are otherwise not really being considered when it comes to pvp so a night fey warrior gets access to basically a shockwave stun from prot warriors have it only at the moment but arms where you can get it it's on its own diminishing return so if you wanted to look for more lockdown you could go stormbolt into the night phase shockwave um i feel like it's not going to end up being stronger than a spear of bastion um potentially or the venthyr condemned to get massive mortal strike pressure out but it's something that if you really wanted to be a night fey warrior because that play transmog is sweet I think it's something you could work, make it work, and especially if you're going to play with a spellcaster uh, in arena. 
Now moving into the number three slot, we've got the Warlock, the Windwalker, and the Healer. And as it stands right now, I would place Windwalkers in a stronger position than Warriors. And they basically fill the same role, right? They apply Mortal Strike, they have AoE stuns, they have AoE damage with Fist of Fury, which punishes um, what is normally the weakness for the Warlock, Belly Cleaves training the Warlock. Right now, I'm not sure, but I'm I'm pretty sure. Uh, the Venthyr, uh, Windwalker, or Monk Covenant ability where you start spawning images, a ton of images, is just overtuned. It's just killing people almost immediately. It does an insane amount of damage. Again, playing with the Restoration Druid, he'll use Ursus Vortex to hold the targets in place. Um, Windwalker has a ton of survivability with Expel Harm baseline here. Uh, it brings Tiger's Lust. It can run Ride the Wind for extra mobility to get the Warlock around the map. And itself has Transcendence and Portal. So this is a very slippery composition that can shift between... AoE damage with Fists of Fury and Dots to single target burst uh, with paralyzes on healers and swaps. So it's a little bit less consistent pressure than the Arms Warrior, but you're going to feel a lot more bursty and have a lot more setup potential. And as long as its sustained damage is even remotely comparable to Arms Warrior, Windwalker Warlock usually supersedes Warrior Affliction Warlock, but that's pending tuning. They both have a very similar style. I would just say that the Windwalker is a bit more punchy uh, and a bit more bursty in particular, but at the moment it's easily one of the best uh, compositions in the game that you could run in Shadowlands as an Affliction Warlock. So if you have any Windwalker buddies, um, this, this, this is going to be a good pick for you. Now moving into the number two slot, <laughs> who could forget about the Rogue? And you might be going, whoa, only number two? That's probably what I'd be thinking right now if I saw this list, but Rogue. So Subtlety Rogue currently has a Legendary, uh, which duplicates their Shadow Strike damage, and it's doing ridiculous damage. Now, without that Legendary, are they going to be as competitive as Assassination Rogues? I don't believe so, which is why I've listed Assassination here as well. So if you've got some Rogue Buddies, have them ready to be able to switch between Subtlety and Assassination. Uh, benefits of Subtlety now in Shadowlands is that they also get Wound Poison, so you're not kind of like totally left with... Uh, a very weak mortal wounds effect or in the past no mortal wounds effect at all so you still have that benefit this is much more burstier of an option when it's tuned to the appropriate level where i feel like it's going to be uh, really bursty has more consistent peeling for the warlock so being able to cheap shot as opposed to leg sweep so you get more control and more burst than the windwalker but after tuning you're probably going to lose some sustain so whether or not Rogue, Warrior, or Windwalker ends up being on the top for the, the melee synergies, that's kind of what I want you to take into account when you're thinking about play style. Um, now, with Rogue, you're probably going to be running a Serrated Bone Spike, even though it's it has been nerfed uh, to where if the target is healed to full health, the Serrated Bone Spike is removed. I think being able to get Serrated Bone Spike on three targets with Affliction Warlock damage will be very difficult for healers to get those targets to full health and getting an extra dot with your warlock that does a ton of damage is going to be really good synergy so that's why i would recommend it at the moment the necrolord rogue again a druid um, would provide you more defense and ursus vortex hold targets down but this composition may you may want to purge as well from a restoration shaman so that would be the benefits of bringing that uh, and then a paladin probably not the best uh, unless you're playing with an Assassination Rogue, because Subtlety Rogue has so many stuns. So Paladin, more or less, if you're going to be playing with Assassination. Uh, and again, providing the Ashen Hollow from the Venthyr to provide that big blood consecration on the ground, zone control, uh, and add a ton of damage. Maybe you go for the Hammer of Wrath Legendary on a Paladin in this composition to really just lay down a ton of burst damage during the setup windows of the Subtlety Rogue. But if Rogue is number two, then what could possibly be number one? How could anything beat a Rogue? What's the other S tier you say? A Shadow Priest. Now, Shadow Priests are behemoths right now. Between having utility, consistent raw damage, burst, uh, instant crowd control, this thing is a monster. I really hope it stays like that. Honestly, I hope that all of the specializations get to a point where they feel like Shadow Priest does. Now, you've got talents like Damnation, which provides you the ability to cast Vampiric Touch instantly and apply Shadow Repain and apply Devouring Plague, which then running with another talent allows you to cast another Vampiric Touch instantly. So one of the downsides of this composition in the past was getting your dots up, getting the damage going. 
Shadow Priests are going to have no problem doing that now. Uh, and with the extra crowd control that they bring being instant, so Psychic Horror into Silence on a Healer, on top of the Warlock's Dots running down the whole team, your Vampiric Touch on top of Unstable Affliction as Dispel Protection, so the Healer is going to get feared into the distance and silenced and take a huge hit of damage. It's going to have a lot of synergy in my mind. You get to protect Mind Games from the Venthyr Covenant for the Shadow Priest, as with this composition, I think it would be wise to run double Venthyr, Venthyr Warlock and a Venthyr Shadow Priest, for 25% interrupt reduction. If you were really feeling like you didn't need the interrupt reduction, then you could drop down to General Draven again and get 10% damage reduction when you're low health. This is going to provide a ton of rot pressure. It has purge, so probably want to play it with a Druid or a Paladin, but you could bring it in with a Restoration Shaman, as Shaman Shadow Priest has had a lot of synergy with their the kind of stationary nature of the Shadow Priest. goes really well with the defensive cooldowns like Earthenwall Totem to protect the Shadow Priest. This is a composition that, in my mind, is going to be i probably should have included it in my total top 10 but that top 10 is going to be updated at least weekly here as tuning happens uh, and then i'm going to be running this series of every specializations top 10 so we can make sure that everybody out there knows what compositions they can be going after because not everybody going to be wanting to be playing the absolute best one that i've listed but they might be wanting to make a specialization work that a lot of people aren't talking about which is still just as competitive. It's just not outstanding uh, to the same level and degree as a lot of the other compositions are currently in Shadowlands. So that's my list here uh, for the Affliction Warlock. I, I hope you enjoyed the video here as we went through some of the changes and some of the updates to the classes. And again, if you liked the video, please leave it with a like. Uh, leave a comment down below with some of your thoughts about what I've brought to the table here in this top 10 video. If you think there's a composition I've missed or a strategy uh, that you're coming up with, I'd love to leave it in the comments so that other people can see it. Again, this channel is meant to be a resource for players moving into Shadowlands to make the right decision on their gameplay, get kind of excited about some of the changes that they might not be aware of, uh, and just kind of uplift everybody competitively so uh, please consider subscribing to the channel if you like that type of content as i'm uploading daily and if you want to check out any of the other videos i'm going to have them linked up above here i've got tier lists i've got top tens i've got reviews if you want to go really into detail you want some summaries it's all there so thank you again very much for watching and we will see you in the next one